Hi, I'm Paul Beckwith. I'm with the University of Ottawa Laboratory for Paleoclimatology, and I'm also with uh, Carleton University, the Department of Geography and Environmental Studies, where I'm teaching a uh, first year physical geography course this term, about 90 odd uh, students, uh, you know, great, great class. In this uh, particular video, I'd like to discuss the Southern Hemisphere. I'd like to discuss uh, the heat wave that has been occurring in Australia, the uh, droughts that have been occurring in Australia in recent years, interlaced with uh, flooding event events and uh, torrential rainfall events. But mostly, you know, they're getting baked down there. They have incredibly high temperatures. The meteorological services have had to revamp their weather maps to add different colors to indicate you know 40 to 45 degrees Celsius 45 to 50 degrees Celsius and so on um, multiply by 1.8 and add 32 in order to get um, Fahrenheit so 50 degrees Celsius times 1.8 is 90 add 32 that's 122 degrees Fahrenheit we're talking about you know the temperatures were so high in parts of Australia that um, all of these different bats that live in the trees and so on, they were just dropping dead onto the ground. Basically, probably completely dehydrated. Temperatures were just too warm. They, they, their bodies overheated. They couldn't dissipate the heat. They just dropped dead. Um, it's not just humans that are being stressed by all of these ridiculous um, temperature uh, events, heat wave events. Uh, the animals, the plants are suffering. It changes everything. So why is the Southern Hemisphere being so, being impacted so much by ongoing abrupt climate change? Now I have discussed this in previous videos. If you just Google Paul Beckwith, um, YouTube Paul Beckwith Antarctica, YouTube Paul Beckwith Southern Hemisphere, you can find um, various videos where I've discussed the effects. But I, I've been getting a lot of requests and comments to to, to talk about this um, from uh, various people so so I felt it was necessary to, to reiterate what's going on so the crux of the matter the root cause of our problem is that the Arctic is getting darker and because it's getting darker it's absorbing more solar radiation so it's heating up even more and then it's getting even darker so it's a cascading feedback effect. Why is it getting darker? Because there's a lot of this stuff up. There's a lot of this stuff on the land and this is very light and reflects solar radiation. About 90% of the short wave of the short wave sunlight coming down is reflected up. It's not absorbed. So it, it, it's, it's kicked out of the area back into space. Now we replace this. We melt this stuff and we have the dark we have dark surfaces and these dark surfaces absorb sunlight and heat up and melt more snow and it's a cascading effect. So the sea ice is rapidly declining um, at 12-13% per decade in terms of extent and area and even, and even volume. And the snow cover over land in the spring, especially in the Arctic, is declining at even faster rates, you know, 22, 23, 24% per decade. So we're very rapidly heading to an Arctic where there's less and less sea ice and eventually just open ocean. And when we don't have the sea ice, the temperature is going to skyrocket in the Arctic. Um, so as bad as things are now, they're going to get a lot worse because of the Arctic changes. Uh, when you have, if you have a kilogram of ice, it takes a certain amount of energy to melt that ice and the temperature stays at zero. You end up, instead of ice at zero, you get water at zero, a kilogram of water. We'll take that energy and apply it to the water. It raises the temperature 80 degrees Celsius. It's, it's because of the differences uh, between sensible heat and latent heat. So Google these terms to see what I'm talking about. Um, when there's no ice there and snow, then all that energy goes into heating the oceans and heating the land and heating the atmosphere. It no longer causes a phase change from, from the solid ice to liquid water. 
So the temperature is going to skyrocket in the Arctic. Now, why is this important? Why is this affecting the globe? Well, because there's less heat going up to the Arctic from the equator. There's less heat because the Arctic temperatures are getting much, much higher because of the absorption of solar radiation increasing. So there's less heat going from the equator. So the jet streams that depend on the transfer of that heat, transfer of air and of water, of fluids, to try to bring heat away from the equator, can no longer go up to the Arctic to vent. So the jet streams become, they slow down because there's less volume of, the, of air moving up. The jet streams slow down, they become much more fractured and broken, they become much wavier, and we get a huge ramping up of extreme weather events like torrential rains and um, droughts in other places, and a whiplashing from one to the other. I mean, look at California. It's been under horrible drought for five or six years. Not this year. This year, the atmospheric rivers are pouring over from the Pacific because we don't have that huge blob of hot water just off the coast of California so the jet streams can carry their moisture directly across and um, we're getting California is being flooded out I mean ra rainfall in California is two three four times higher than normal this year so it's filled up the reservoirs very very quickly now the reservoirs also function <coughs> for electrical power generation etc and so the infrastructure, the dams, look at the Oroville Dam. I mean, we just about had a failure of this dam. The spillway did fail, and there's an overflow um, earth, um, earth piled spillway, which was in danger of, of, of failing, which would have, you know, let a, if it had failed, there would have been a huge wall of water going through those valleys in California, taking out all kinds of infrastructure. You know, over 200,000 people were evacuated. This is this weather whiplashing that is occurring with climate change. It is absolutely insane to think about spending billions of dollars to build a wall uh, along the border with Mexico. We need this money to, to strengthen and harden infrastructure to meet the real threat of abrupt climate change affecting infrastructure in the US and in countries around the world and not go off on these fantasy manufactured fake you know quests to you know wall off regions it's absolutely you know we th this is it, it's this is a life and death issues that are being discussed and we need the information that is truthful and factual about them and that is that climate change is the biggest threat just ask the uh, US military about climate change and about the uh, threat multipliers so getting back to the southern hemisphere there's more heat at the equator. It causes more evaporation at the, heat, at the equator. There's a slight heating of increase in sensible heat, but not much because most is going into the latent heat of evaporating water forming cloud in the intertropical convergence zone. So what does that mean? Well, that heat has to go somewhere else. So the heat from the equator is moving into the southern hemisphere. It's going as far down as Australia, causing massive temperature rises in Australia and baking the continent basically. It's making life miserable in Australia. Now up to now, this heat has not made it down to Antarctica until very recently. Some of it has in the ocean currents which undercut Antarctica, which have been increasing the melt rates of sea ice off the ice caps. But in the atmosphere, it's been clashing with the cold air increasing the rate of the jet stream movement in the southern hemisphere, decreasing the meridional north-south movement, increasing the zonal west <coughs> to east movement, and this increased energy in the jet stream because of deflection to the left in the southern hemisphere, it's been pulling sea ice away from Antarctica. So the sea ice has been increasing about one and a half percent per decade for the last few decades. A few, two years ago, we had record extent of sea ice in Antarctica, but not this year. This year, we've fallen off the map. We have record low levels. So what this means is that the sea ice, there's still very strong winds which are pulling the sea ice out, but what it means is that the ocean is warmer and it's basically, as the ice 
then ice tries to expand away from the continent, it's being chopped off and melted quickly and broken up by, by wave action and by warmer water. So what that means is that heat, the heat that went as far as Australia and set up this strong temperature gradient with the southern annular mode going around Antarctica has now actually started to penetrate through that barrier and is reaching closer and closer to Antarctica. So there's more water undercutting the ice and which is, which is melting the ice from underneath. And don't forget that West Antarctic ice sheet um, is basically sitting on bedrock well under sea level. So the glaciers there are being threatened severely. We have Larsen Sea about to collapse. You know, a massive, um, a massive crack has been extended further and further. So this is on the Antarctic Peninsula. It's about to collapse. We have the Totten Glacier on East Antarctica being undercut, undergoing severe melting. And it was not believed that East Antarctica was that big a threat in terms of sea level rise. Uh, so this is not, so, you know, faster than normal is proceeding uh, like it always has been with climate change. You know, it's about time. You know, also it really, it's really annoying. I mean, the mainstream media, um, you know, they're, they're saying things like, it's like, they're, they're, they're all, they're, the way they, they, they phrase titles of articles and stuff, it's like, everything is new, nobody's expected this. I mean, if they did any bit of de de digging deeper about, you know, abrupt climate change and the change in the jet streams and how all the big picture is changing very rapidly and where we're heading at, they'd, they'd find people like myself. But, uh, you know, they don't, uh, I don't get calls too often from mainstream media. You know, I do occasionally, um, you know, I'll have to start sort of pushing back and uh, being more proactive on that, but there's only so much time in a day. So, you know, if you want to try to get this message out, you know, maybe you can do your part and contact your local newspapers and mainstream media, you know, give them my number. Uh, you know, I'm very happy to, to take calls and have impromptu interviews with people. Um, and, uh, you know, just send me a message on um, my website, paulbeckwith.net, you know, say that you give, say that, you know, send me a, a, a message or, you know, find me on Facebook or Twitter and send me a message. That's usually the best way to get a hold of me because I spend probably too much time on those, on Facebook Messenger and on Twitter. Just send me a Twitter message say that you know you want to get an interview or there's a newspaper that's interested and I'll, you know I'm very prompt at return try to be very prompt at, at returning uh, those types of messages so you know so in a, in a nutshell um, you know it, it like it's interesting articles came out recently about the very wealthy people the, the richest 1% or 0.1% who are all getting sort of bug out scenarios you know they're buying land in New Zealand they think they're gonna go to New Zealand and when, when everything, when all the brown stuff hits a fan, you know, um, they're preparing for different governments, you know, in their countries to collapse. Um, and, you know, rather than making as much noise as they can about climate change being a threat and we have to, we have to deal with it, you know, they're, they're absolutely pathetically looking at running with their tails between their legs to these so-called havens of safety on the planet. Well, I've got news for you people. For the, if anybody's listening, okay, there are no havens of safety on the planet, okay? We're all going to suffer in the end, um, and it's not going to all happen overnight, and it's not going to all happen, you know, with an extinction, uh, you know, in a year or so. I mean, it, it basically, it's, it's already, we're already ongoing this turmoil. We're already seeing massive hits to infrastructure, to food supply, to water supply, to to roads and bridges and stuff everywhere, to cities, to people's livelihoods, um, causing migrations and grief and stuff. It's already happening. It's a process, you know, in geological time, yeah, it's, uh, it's instantaneous, it happens. But, you know, it doesn't happen in reality that way. In human lifetimes, it happens as a, a progression of things getting worse and worse. And, you know, people can't ignore this forever. Uh, so please uh, consider a donation to help me get the message out, paulbeckwith.net. Thank you very much.